Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want. Thanks for logging on. Today, we look at the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph 45 millimeters by approximately 16 millimeters thick in stainless steel. I also have to mention before proceeding any further a recognition of the late French Captain Robert Malubier, formerly of the French Navy, specifically the Niger de Combat Special Forces Unit, effectively the pioneer of modern amphibious tactical forces. Captain Malubier was instrumental in the specification of the first 1953 50 Fathoms reference, which was actually a military contract between the French Navy and the Rayville Watch Company of Switzerland, doing business as the Blancpain brand. Now, at the age of 92, in the last couple of days, uh, Robert Malubier did pass away. He served with the Free French during World War II and British intelligence. He was actually a British MBE by Queen Elizabeth II, as well as a member of the Legion of Merit within France, a highly decorated officer, a true hero of democracy, and um, he left an unbelievable legacy to luxury watch enthusiasts such as ourselves. Undoubtedly, that's incremental details in the tremendous legacy left by a genuine hero. But the bottom line is we can't ignore the role that he played in the development of the watch that we see here today. The 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph. This being a special edition released in 2012, the 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph with blue bezel and a flinke dial, alternately guilloche ingrained with a lacquer, a translucent blue lacquer over it. It has extraordinary presence in the flesh, and I'll warn you ahead of time, my iPhone just is not going to do justice to this one. You need to see it in high resolution images on our website, Watch You Want. Let's put it on the wrist and break it down. The bottom line is this watch wears like the Cadillac of dive watches. It has tremendous presence. The Blancpain 50 Fathoms was reimagined for 2007 as a full-sized modern sports watch, still bearing the original qualities, the unidirectional dive bezel, the automatic winding, the anti-magnetic soft iron Faraday cage around the movement, the screw down crown, the high loom indexes that the original 1953 exhibited. The watch also features a high degree of luxury finish. The bracelet fit is incredible. The tolerances are unbelievable. The feeling of substance on the wrist, the contrasting polish is alternately brushed, alternately polished. The sapphire capped bezel, slightly convex that flows straight into the sapphire of the main crystal. All of it speaks to a standard that is definitely one notch or two above the norm within the so-called professional or tool watch sector. On my wrist, which is six and a third inches in circumference, roughly 16 centimeters, the watch sits comfortably. It's much, much larger than your standard 40 millimeter Rolex, and yet because of the nicely cupped case back, short lugs, and the conforming ability of this supple bracelet, the watch fits comfortably. It's not top heavy. It's beautifully counterbalanced by a very substantial double deployant clasp on the other side, and it spreads its weight nicely from side to side because of the broad shoulders and the even regular shape of the case back itself. Ergonomically, it's a real winner. Now, stylistically, you can see that this one's just a little bit more Baroque than the standard 50 Fathoms. There is that flinke dial. It has a combination of rose engine alternating wave patterns around the center, which is extensively guilloche and then the minute Rayhot around the edge, the chapter ring outboard of the hour indices. It's actually guilloche likewise, but very subtle. It's not going to show up on the iPhone. It will show up on the high res images on our website. Alternately, I want to call out the quality of the plied hour indexes, the numerals at 12, and the white gold sword hands and sub register hands. No expenses spared to create the impression of true haute de gamme watchmaking in spite of the sports watch intent of this 50 Fathoms reference. Now this is definitely a different look. It's a little bit more, uh, I would say, extrovert than the standard black dialed 50 Fathoms, but it really works. And the combination of the key lime luminova on the sapphire, or under the sapphire of the bezel and on the dial itself, really looks incredibly striking and stand out against that blue background, which becomes absolutely brilliant in direct sunlight. This is a watch that really has to be seen in direct light to get the full effect, but I can promise you it's worth a look. Now, the 50 Fathoms, like I said, is finished to something of a higher standard than a conventional dive watch, and that sapphire bezel is a little bit unique, although some others have attempted it, uh, Bremont being one, for instance. The convex bezel on the 50 Fathoms 
remains something of a singular achievement in modern watchmaking. The way it bends light and slightly distorts the printing underneath it gives this watch a truly unique look. And the fact that it is a sapphire and not a piece of ceramic means that it's far easier to provide full loom underneath it where it's protected than it is to implant loom into ceramic or a conventional PVD bezel. So you have a fully loomed bezel on this watch and at night it glows like a 747 coming in for a landing. And that's the real benefit of the sapphire in addition to the aesthetic elegance of it, the ability to have a fully protected, fully loomed bezel, a very cool feature. Now I want to take the watch off the wrist now that you've gotten a sense of its fit. And I want to give you a sense of the detents of the bezel because I feel that's a critical feature of any dive watch. You want to hear it. And it sounds like machine gun fire. I mean, it's incredibly crisp. It's incredibly precise, very substantial, and yet not so hard to turn that I would have to fight with it were my hands sweaty, wet, or gloved. Uh, likewise, the clasp is just redolent of the kind of quality that you get in the 50 Fathoms. Double deployant with the Blancpain JB signature on both sides, there's a leaf spring that's slung over the center of the clasp that allows the clasp to snap shut. Likewise, it'll snap open and spring open when you deploy it. Very secure, feels like a million dollars. This is like, I always like to use the analogy, a vintage Mercedes-Benz door. I get that sense here, just over-engineered, wonderful attention to detail, really speaks to the kind of quality in evidence throughout the watch. Likewise, the bracelet itself has phenomenal fit and finish, polished on its shoulders, polished on its outer links, but alternately polished and brushed, brushed entirely on its center links. It feels incredibly silken against the skin. This is one of the most user-friendly dive watch bracelets I've ever encountered. It's right up there with the five link system on the original Omega Seamaster Professional 300 meter, the Bond watch that I've called out on numerous occasions as an exemplar of the type. This is right up there. And unlike the Bonds, this bracelet and the accompanying uh, textile strap is secured with screwed in end links. So you actually have to remove these spring bars. They're not spring bars, they're screwed in bars using a jeweler's tool that's included with the watch. And the watch is incredibly robust in that you can't simply pull this off and you can't accidentally lose the bracelet or lose the strap as you can on some, quote, sports watches that feature the spring bars. Blancpain just goes above and beyond with this one. Moreover, the flyback chronograph is an interesting complication. Unlike a conventional chronograph, this F-185 movement features a flyback, allows you to stop, start, and reset the chronograph with a single push and no hazard to the movement going straight to the reset button right here. Now the crowns look like they're screw downs, they are not. That's simply for stylistic effect and coherence. The principal crown is, the pushers are not, the principal crown is. The watch is water resistant to 300 meters in spite of the fact that it does not have screw down crowns. I find these are more convenient to use. Um, oftentimes the use of a chronograph is an impromptu moment. It's something that it's a need that often arises without any kind of preemptive warning, so the ability to go straight to the chronograph without having to unscrew the pushers is very convenient. Inside, Blancpain calls this the F-185 movement. I call it the Frédéric Piguet 1185. Frédéric Piguet is the longtime movement manufacturer partner of Blancpain. They've been together since Blancpain was resurrected in the 1980s. True high horology manufacturer. Frédéric Piguet finishes everything to the highest standard, and their 1185 movement is considered one of the modern classics. Over the last 40 years, few movements have received as much acclaim as the 1185. An automatic, integrated, vertical clutch, column wheel chronograph, it is a pleasure to use. The tactile sense of resetting it, watching it start, watching the hand reset completely, watching it start without any jump or stagger, watching it stop without jumping or staggering, it's a fantastic piece to use. It's worthy of the exterior fit, finish, and presentation of this 50 Fathoms flyback chronograph. This is a watch with a tremendous history behind it. The modern history since 2007, it's reigned as one of the finest full-blown sports references at the very top shelf level of high horology. And at the same time, with its authentic military history dating back to 1953 and its status as one of the original dive watches, it has a heritage that will rival any Rolex or Panerai. This Blancpain 50 Fathoms flyback chronograph presents in outstanding condition with all boxes and papers. You can see it in high resolution images 
on our website, Watch You Want.